Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today we're taking a look at the last of the stock coolers that ships with the Ryzen 3000 series of CPUs that just launched on July 7th. And this one is the Wraith Prism cooler that comes with everything from the Ryzen 7 3700X all the way up to the Ryzen 9 3900X. All those CPUs will ship with this exact cooler. So today we're taking a look at it and really trying to figure out if it's worth it to even upgrade that cooler for a lot of these chips or whether you're just as well to just buy the chip, stick with the cooler and move on with your life. Uh, so we're kind of taking a look at the performance and how it performs to other aftermarket coolers as well as the other Wraith coolers. But before we get into all of that, I am still giving away a Ryzen 5 3600X. The link to the giveaway is in the description below. You have about a week left before I pick the winner for this giveaway, so enter down below if you haven't already. With all that said, let's get into taking a look at this cooler. So before we get into actually looking at the different cooler setups that I threw together here, let's talk about the RGB just for a second. And the fact that I actually love the implementation that AMD went with with this cooler because A, it's like the only stock cooler on the planet right now that you can get that actually has RGB out of the box and B, AMD paired it with detachable RGB cables. You can either plug it into an RGB header on your motherboard or a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard, and both those cables are detachable. So if you decide to go without RGB at all, because maybe you're just building more of a stealth build or you just don't like it in general, you just don't care about it, whatever the case is, you don't have to have those cables just hanging like an octopus off of your CPU cooler because you can go with as little as just the fan cable. So great job with AMD on that front. Now this downfiring cooler does have one other added benefit and that is the fact that these downfiring air coolers actually blow air out to the VRMs. With this one, because of the direction of the fins, you're really only getting a benefit on the CPU VRMs. Any SOC or added CPU VRMs that are along the top of the motherboard won't really benefit from this. But the fact of the matter is with most of these Ryzen 3000 chips, you're not really needing that semi-active cooling coming off of the CPU cooler to keep the VRMs uh, nice and cool. If they have a heat sink on them, they're probably going to be just fine, certainly up until you get to the, the 12 core and later on the 16 core uh, CPUs from this Ryzen 3000 series. The only exception to that might be if you're pairing it with a cheap B350 or B450 motherboard with a cheap VRM to begin with, then you might start to push your VRMs a little bit. But for the most part, that added cooling isn't really going to give you much of a tangible benefit, even though your VRMs are likely to stay just a little bit cooler than they would otherwise. Now, all that aside, let's take a look at the actual cooling performance of this cooler. So as you can see in the chart, we put the Wraith Prism up against several other coolers, both the different Wraith coolers that come with different Ryzen 3000 series chips, as well as the Arctic Freezer 34 Esports Duo and a Corsair H100 IV2 featuring side fans. And the surprise of this entire chart was the fact that the Arctic despite retesting, came out as the best cooler of the bunch. And that did very much surprise me. Not only that, but it was the second quietest cooler, though that's splitting hairs for sure. The H100 IV2 was undoubtedly the quietest cooler, barely audible whatsoever. And to be fair to the prism here, it was also not that audible. And in fact, inside of a case, it's highly unlikely you would hear it over your GPU fans as well as your case fans. So if noise is a big deal for you, then yes, you may be able to pick out the prism cooler versus the these other sort of better performing coolers but the fact of the matter is it's such a low hum it's such a non-obtrusive noise unless you're extremely sensitive to those sort of annoying noises from your system this thing is just kind of fade off into the background unlike those older amd coolers that used to come with things like the fx lineup that were just jet engines when they revved up uh, this is not the case with the Spire cooler, the Stealth cooler, and certainly not with the Wraith Prism cooler. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky from the Wraith Prism cooler's perspective, because unlike those cheaper coolers, the Wraith Stealth, the Wraith Spire that come with lower end chips, this cooler does come with significantly higher end chips, and you do get added performance out of Ryzen by keeping thermals lower, even though these temperatures are nowhere near any sort of danger zone. The fact of the matter is with an all core overclock or with precision boost overdrive, you will get higher clock speeds if you can keep Ryzen's temperatures in check because as you overclock Ryzen, it is a series of chips, both the 1000, 2000, and even up to the 3000 series. They're all sensitive to temperature before they get to the dangerous points. So if you can keep 
temperature is down with an aftermarket cooler, you will likely see better performance across the board, even if you're just relying on something like PBO to do your overclocks for you, or even if you're going for an all core overclock, you will get some benefit from these third party coolers even though the Prism is keeping this chip perfectly cool. But the tricky part of all this is whether it's really worth the investment. Now, I would argue if you're pairing it with a Ryzen 9 3900X, then yeah, it's a, that chip can get pretty hot pretty quickly, especially if you're going for an all-core overclock and pushing some decent voltages. But if you're looking at the bottom end of the chips that this thing ships with, like the Ryzen 7 3700X, maybe it's worth it to just put that off because the fact of the matter is you're getting a small return for a fairly large investment in Arctic cooler like this one is going to cost you probably $35 to $45, depending on if you can catch it on a deal or not. And then an AIO like the H100 IV2 is probably going to cost you at least $70, and that's if you pick it up on a decent deal. So there is definitely an argument to be made for upgrading your cooler, though hopefully this testing, if nothing else showed, if you already have an aftermarket cooler, it is likely to perform a little bit better than this Wraith Prism cooler, but you're not seeing huge benefits, and maybe you are into the RGB bling, in which case maybe sticking with the Wraith Prism isn't the worst thing in the world. I can tell you though, this is a competent cooler. It will get you up and running and it will likely give you some decent clocks using precision boost overdrive or even looking for a decent all core overclock. You're going to do okay with the Wraith Prism. And if you're trying to save a little bit of money on your build as you put things together, this is a really good way to spare yourself about 30 or $40 on a different air cooler because you can definitely get up and going and be perfectly stable and not have to worry about temperatures with the Wraith Prism. But of course, I do want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this RGB cooler out of the box from AMD? Do you like it or would you rather see AMD save a little bit of money on the production cost, maybe chop off the cooler altogether with something like the 3900X and just pass those savings along to the consumer? Let me know your thoughts down below. And of course, if you like the video, hey, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are helpful to the channel. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. Again, the links down below to that so you can uh, possibly get your hands on a free Ryzen 5 3600X. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos around me from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.